Akane Korashiki. It's... it's you! Jun! I, I mean, Akane, from... but you're old. Yes, that's correct. I haven't spoken to you in a very long time, Clover. Yeah, you thought it was Kay all along, but it was me, Akane! Or you, Junpei. J Junpei? Akane. Long time no see. I could barely hear what they were saying. My mind was still reeling. It felt like all the air had been knocked out of me, and it was all I could do to not collapse right then and there. When? How long? Do you remember when the two of you saved me in the warehouse? Once you saved me, you went back to your future. Well, your minds did, at least. I carried your bodies to the third AB room, and then took Dio's to the fifth. After that, I went into the first room and borrowed Kay's armor. So by the time you and Clover came out, you'd already... Yes. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Dio killed you, and then Luna took your body to the sixth room. You couldn't have been in Kay's armor. No, it was me. In this timeline, at least. In this one, I wasn't murdered by Dio. You two saved me. It's just like Schrodinger's cat. Your actions in the future decided who would be inside the armor in the past. What? No, that, that's nuts. All right, what about the other history? The one where you weren't saved? What happens then? Who's wearing the armor? That's quite simple. The man in front of you. Him? That's correct. Whenever I'm not in the armor, he is. What about the memory loss? For my part, I confess that I lied. He, on the other hand, was telling the truth. Large doses of soporil can cause memory loss. I gave him a rather large dose. So, who is he? You've never seen him before? No. What about the rest of you? I have no idea who he is. I've never seen him before. Me either. Total stranger. Hey, come on! What are you guys saying? Right here? Same face? Huh? Huh? Are you alright, Mr. Sigma? Did you hit your head or something? Huh? What? It didn't make any sense. And yeah, remember Seven, how he had his memory loss? Yeah. He was basically anesthetized with a large, large dose of Soparil. Well, we did see his face in the beginning of the game back in 2028 when he was gassed in his car. We haven't seen his face since. Or have we? Why didn't they recognize me? Sigma, your consciousness can jump through time. You can inhabit your body in the past or in the future. Well, what does that mean? Don't you get it? You've jumped to the future. From 45 years ago. I looked around frantically. A pawn! I ran to it and threw myself down onto my knees. Crawling on all fours, I approached the edge. My heart was hammering inside my chest. The cold sweat trickled down my spine. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down, damn it. I struggled to take deep breaths. 
and slowly. Have you seen a mirror that works this whole time? There hasn't been a... There hasn't... That one in the infirmary was basically useless, though. No, there weren't. There have not been mirrors anywhere. Except for the one in the infirmary, and it was too, uh... Wrecked to see. Yeah, but the apparently the aluminum foil didn't work as a mirror. Go figure. I peered into the pond, looking for my reflection. Gee, does that look familiar to anybody? What? No, this, this can't be real. This face. It's your face, Dr. Sigma Climb. Although, to the you that's behind it now, it's your face 45 years from now. Zero, the mastermind of the AB project, is you. Yeah, there's a... You thought it was him all along, but, you know, anyway. There's a joke to be made here, but, you know. What? No! That's not possible! That's bullshit! No. It's the truth. Fighting it isn't going to do you any good. Please, Doctor. Yes, we can smack Sigma for the termite thing. I'm not a doctor. You will be. A pioneer in the field of genetic engineering. You're lying! No, I'm not. You created him. Well, I suppose I should say you are going to create him. Create? His name is Kyle Clive. Your clone. That is why he looks just like a younger version of yourself. 23 years ago, in the biolab here in Rhizome 9, you created Kyle. Well, I suppose for you, that's still in the future. When I said I was born and raised here, I was still pretending to be him. The gravity here is only one-sixth of Earth's. If nothing was done, the reduced gravity would cause his bones to be weaker than normal human ones. But you prepared for that. You gave him that armor. Ever since he was born, he's lived inside of it. It kept his muscles and bones strong. He wasn't forced into it for the nonary game. He's been wearing it every day, all his life. But, why would I, why would future me create a clone? He was to be your spare. If something happened to you before the project began, he would take your place. I would assume the armor has openings for that. I mentioned before that the A-B projects A and B stood for after and before. That isn't all they mean, though. The A also means anima, and the B means body. Yeah, that's a little better than after and before. Anima is another word for the soul or the consciousness. Body is, well, exactly what it says on the tin. Mm, considering, I think, Sigma Junior there is a little bulkier than she is, I would imagine she could hike the skirt up and put on the armor. The past consciousness will go into the future body, and the future consciousness will go into the past body. They switch. That was the chief goal of the project. Wait, so the future person goes into the past person? Sigma, do you remember the note you found in the garden? 
You mean this, right? Yes. Yeah, let's follow this around a little bit here. Ah. Uh, of course, it was you who investigated the garden in this timeline. Yeah. Sigma, take a good look at this. It's an illustration of the time jumps your consciousness is making. Eh, that's what the big red robe was for. She took the armor off, left it on so she could hike down her skirt in some manner of privacy. Don't question it. Just, just go with it. A is where everything began. I thought A was for, you know, anima. December 25th, 2028. Yes, Min wrote this, so we need to question it, yes. You inhaled the white smoke in your car and lost consciousness. Sigma is also a master at manspreading. From there, you jumped to B. January 25th, 2074. You woke up in one of the A-B rooms in Rhizome 9. You are in your own body, but it is 67 years old. Your consciousness has jumped 45 years into the future. I believe that may explain why you didn't notice the reduced lunar gravity. The body you woke up in was much older. Normally, you would have noticed that your muscles were much weaker. In this case, however, the lower gravity balanced that out. Moving on. If you continue along this line, what happens next? You reach C, which is January 27th, 2074. That is today. Whoa. Wait, what do you mean? Are you saying it's been two days since we woke up? 36 hours to be exact. Have you already forgotten? You are all infected with radical sex. Speaking of, we need to give you the antidote for that right now. Only two of you. The virus slowed your brain down. So yes, 36 hours of real time have passed. But to you, it only seemed like 14 hours and 40 minutes. Now comes the important part. After this, your consciousness will return to the past. We do still have the one jar of it that we can use the uh, IG replicator on, but you know. It will re-emerge at point D. April 13th, 2029. You will return to your younger body. But that's the same day as the reactor explosions. Yes. That is why I said it will be too late. We found the two bottles that we used on Quark and Alice, but then there's that third bottle that we found, well, in the safe way, way earlier than this, back in the lab. You will return to the past, but the events you would want to prevent will have already happened. The story does not end there, however. Mm -hmm. We had one bottle and we duplicated, but in the control room, we found two bottles in a safe. So there were three bottles scattered around. The line continues. After reaching point D, you will eventually return to B. But this time, you won't be jumping through time or at least not at a rate faster than normal. 
your consciousness will spend 45 years inhabiting the same body until you reach point B. Do you remember when B is, Sigma? January 25th, 2074. According to what you just told us, it's 36 hours ago. Correct. That was when the consciousness of the 22-year-old Sigma jumped into the body of 67-year-old Sigma. So where did the older version of you go when you took his body? Point A. December 25th, 2028. The day all of this started. Yes. His consciousness will go back in time 45 years. For a period of time, he will inhabit your younger body. While your younger consciousness is elsewhere, he will be you in the past. But once that body reaches point D, my 22-year-old consciousness will come back from point C. That's correct. When that happens, the older version of you will be ejected from your younger body and return to your body at C. Does the eye work like a camera? Probably. It could shoot lasers. That would be neat. So it's rotating. Rotating? I suppose you could put it that way. But look at this illustration closely. What if you take all these lines and untangle them? You get one single line. It may look complicated, but in truth, it's a single straight path, with one exception. This line here, point E, right? Exactly. Point E is December 31st, 2028, the day of the total eclipse. The day Radical 6 got out of the test facility. Yes. By now, you've likely figured it out on your own. The purpose of the AB project was to get the consciousness of the 67-year-old Sigma from point B to point A. So if there's a 45-year gap, where was the other mind? Remember, you don't have to match up time periods. You just have to match up consciences to fit in the time periods. If we can do that, we can change what happened 45 years ago. So the old version of me will keep Radical 6 from getting out by jumping into my 22-year-old body on New Year's Eve 2028. Yes. That is why this line could not be interrupted. In order for the 67-year-old version of you to reach point B, we first have to go through point D. In order to get to point D, we must jump from point C. And for point C to happen, we had to recreate everything that happened in this facility. That is why we have faithfully retraced history up to this point. So that we might save humankind from destruction. And undo the horrors of the last 45 years. Remember, consciousnesses, uh, consciousnesses, I cannot say that word right now, can float in voids, so to speak. Also, they have alternate timelines to go down to, so there's that. So, you know, if you think a consciousness needs more time to be in a certain spot to make other consciousnesses you know, all that. It basically went to an alternate timeline or something along those lines. 
that's pretty much the only explanation you're going to get. Tell me one thing. What is that? You said that point C is January 27th, 2074, which is today. There's going to be a jump, and I'll jump to April 13th, 2029. Yes, that's right. But, look, I'm still old. When is this jump supposed to happen? Very soon. Soon? Yes. And what's going to trigger it? We need potential energy stored to send your consciousness into the fourth dimension. Oh yeah, when we get to zero time dilemma, oh yeah, that's going to make this even more convoluted. Fortunately, we now have plenty of that. Thanks, ironically, to Radical Six. All that remains is to launch your consciousness. Like a bullet from a slingshot. And how do you propose to do that? Didn't I tell you? A crisis. A moment balanced between life and death. That can jumpstart your brain. Uh, what do you mean? You haven't figured it out. I mean this. Dio's knife? No sooner were the words out of my mouth. I screamed and leapt toward them. Akane was already in motion, the knife diving towards Five's chest. I was almost there. When I regained consciousness, I was on the floor. There was a dull pain in my chest. I felt for a cut, but something was in the way. It took me a moment to realize that it was Akane's body lying on top of me. I twisted my neck to look around. Nearby was an old tombstone. On it was written a few words in Latin. Tu fui ego eris. What you are, I was. What I am, you will be. So were you ready for credits to roll? Because that's what you're getting. Yep, that's your game, right there. These are the last credits we will ever see. And yes, we completely broke the fourth dimension. We completely shattered the fourth dimension. It's all good. And just think, we've only really scratched the surface of how much nonsense this series is going to throw at us.
Oh, look! We've got another destination added to the flowchart. Who could have saw that coming? An achievement unlocked time after time. We have indeed broke time. Today is April 13th, 2029, and this is the evening news. Unfortunately, I... I'm sorry. I don't have any news to read. All of our station's reporters have... have passed after contracting Radical Six. So have my... Excuse me. I've managed to keep us on the air until now. But I'm out of tricks. It's time for me to sign off. This concludes our broadcast day. I pray that someday... Our world can be cleansed of this horrible plague. Goodbye. For a moment, I just stared at the TV. The roar of the static seemed to fill the entire room until, with a click, it disappeared too. Had the power gone out? Welcome to Danganronpa World. I heard footsteps behind me and turned around. You. Akane? It looks like the first step was successful. What the fuck? You killed me! Killed? I guess technically you're going to kill me 45 years from now, but still! Hey, no need to be rude about it. Uh, I didn't kill you. I hit you with the butt of the knife. You're fine. I'm okay? Yes. You and Fi needed to experience a state of crisis. Uh, that was the only way. Me and Fi? Yes. I only told you about you, but we also needed Fi to jump. Funny we're going back to this 2D art style, isn't it? Now, you know what happens next, right? Uh, we go to the moon. Correct. We will be leaving tomorrow, April 14th, 2029. We've nearly finished preparing your shuttle. Only a few last minute checks and additions. You'll be traveling to Rhizome 9, along with three treatment pods. <laughs> Alice and Clover, right? Yes. What about the third one? Who's in there? Fi. We put her into cold sleep two days ago. She appeared at our headquarters and volunteered to be frozen. That wasn't the Fi who jumped from point C, though. It was Fi before she jumped from point A to point D. In other words, she was following the same path you are. And she still is. <laughs> Then that means after you froze her, the point C version of her jumped back into her body? Oh, Phi is going to exist for a whole lot more than that. Yes. The point C version of Phi is sleeping in that pod. She'll stay there for the next 45 years, sleeping in ice. Then, when she gets to point B, her consciousness will jump to point A, right? Correct. Huh. So that's why she didn't look old. So why don't you just stick me in one of those pods? We can't do that. Why not? You haven't figured it out? You have to spend the next 45 years working on the AB project. After arriving at Rhizome 9, you must master genetic engineering and artificial intelligence programming, among other disciplines. Otherwise, you will be unable to create Kyle, Luna, and Lagomorph. And, of course, you will need to develop the chromatic doors and the bracelets. You will also be the person who summons Tenmyoji and Quark. Yeah. Oh, by the way, 
here's what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. Once you've completed all the preparations, then the project can actually begin. January 25th, 2074. You will defrost Phi and carry her to the third AB room. Once you've done that, the 22-year-old version of you from point A will force you out. Yeah, you're not getting paid for anything. And you'll just go back 45 years to your own body on December 25th, 2028. And then I change history. Do you really think I can keep the virus from getting out? You have to. If you don't, billions of people will die. Only you and Fi can save them. What about you? Aren't you an Esper too? I can't do anything on my own. If this is going to work, I'll need your help. So what do I need to do? What do you mean? Like, what specific actions do I need to take? When Fi and I jump to point A, what are we going to do then? You'll both enter the Mars mission test site. And after that? I don't know. What? I'm sorry. I really don't know anything about what happens in there. We don't know how the Radical Six escaped. We don't even know why it was there in the first place. Ah, crap. Then we're screwed. That's why we need your help. You have the ability to jump through time and across parallel worlds. We need you to figure out what happened in that test facility. Technically, he can't jump without, oh, say, having been to Hawaii at some point in time in his life. He can't just jump to a random location. He has to jump to, you know, somewhere he's been. And besides, in this timeline, what would Hawaii be like? Things will be difficult. And I'm sure you will find yourself in a great deal of danger. But I believe the two of you can overcome any obstacle. Wait. How do you know it's so dangerous? The 67-year-old version of you told me what happened. He wasn't able to stop the virus. So I suppose you could say you told me after you failed. Um, what did he or what did I say? That the test facility is full of traps. There was one point a woman's life was in danger. You risked yourself for her sake and lost your arms and your right eye. Thus, the robotic arms. My arms and my right eye? What the hell? Suddenly, a low rumble shook the building. What was that? Go have a look. I moved slowly to the window and peered outside. On the horizon, I could see a massive mushroom cloud climbing slowly toward the sky. Would I, would we really be able to change the course of history? No, that was the wrong way to look at it. It couldn't be a question. I had to change history. We could save the world. I'm going to change history. I stared at the darkening skies above us and steeled myself. I would succeed. Indoor beginning. Achievement unlocked. Fire and ice. However, if you, it didn't give you any notification of this, but since I got all of the secret files, it opens up one last path.
Because if you don't get all the secret files, that's where the game ends. That's it. However, we have an infirmary in another time. Wake up. I see you've finally woken up, Kyle. Kyle? Ah, uh, yes. Of course. You've only just woken up in this timeline. It's only natural for some of your memories to be missing. I lurched upright, jumped off the bed, and ran around to the other side of the partition. The mirror over the sink was covered with a film of dirt. I wiped it off my sleeve, and my reflection stared back at me. There was no mistake. The reflection belonged to... Kyle Klein. So, I'm Dr. Klein? Zero Senior's clone? Hello, McCree. Yeah. Shouldn't you still be suffering from amnesia? An excellent question. One I didn't quite know the answer to myself. I knew who Kyle Klim was. In another history, he had been called K and worn a suit of armor. He hadn't just worn the armor in that history, though. Apparently, he'd worn it all his life. Kyle had been born and raised in this lunar installation, but seemed to be called Rhizome 9. Rather late in his life, Akane had appeared as a mother figure, and he had consequently grown very attached to her. I knew everything about him, but even though I knew it, I didn't feel it. Was I really Kyle Klein? Every time I looked in the mirror, I saw his face. The spitting image of Sigma Klein in his younger days. I looked down. There was Dio still handcuffed. I turned back around to Luna. What day is today? January 27th, 2074. And today is the last day of the AB project. Akane has explained everything in the garden. And she drew a knife and attacked Phi. How long have I been asleep? About five hours in real time. Yeah, Matt Mercer loves to stream on Twitch, and also he loves to occasionally play Overwatch and actually play McCree. Go figure. For them, it would have seemed like a little more than two hours. So they still haven't been treated for their Radical Six? No, they've all been given the antiviral. It just takes a while to have an effect. Uh, I see. So the consciousness of the younger Sigma has gone back into the past. It should have happened right after Akane attacked Phi, right? Yes. Why am I here? The doctor carried you back here. You were in the pod in the garden. So the person you call the doctor is Sigma Klein, as inhabited by his age-appropriate consciousness. Yes, but how do you know that? Dio seems to have remained unconscious. Yes. I've been administering Soparil whenever he gets restless. What about the others? They've all gone off to different areas. Tenmyoji and Quark, for instance. Oh, um... Right! Mr. Klein! So the sleepyhead's finally up, huh? What are you two doing here? You don't know where we are? This is the upper floor of the pressure exchange chamber. The real one. Mm-hmm. We were just about to get dressed and head out. You plan to return then? To Earth, I mean. Yeah. Sigma told us where we could find the shuttle that brought us here. Well, guess he's not really the Sigma I knew anymore. He's Dr. Climb now, or, or Zero Senior, depending on how you look at it. Why? What do you mean, why? Um, well, 
I'm just curious why you would choose to return to a devastated planet when you could stay here. How's staying here gonna help? You aren't gonna say something idiotic about how we should wait here until Sigma changes the past, are you? You can't wait for something that's already happened. Grammar doesn't work that way. Hell, nature doesn't work that way. He has a point. You following me? We've already lived through history. Sigma failed to keep the virus from getting out. About 45 years ago, Radical Six created a pandemic and the antimatter reactors blew up. That all happened. Whatever Sigma does in the past, history's not gonna change. In fact, it's because of what he did or didn't do in the past that we've got this past and present. Let me give you an example. Imagine a group of a hundred motorcycles driving down an endless freeway. Eventually, they hit a junction. We have essentially made it possible to succeed. But it's not going to change what everyone's living through here. That doesn't happen. We're basically, even if he could save the world and stop the virus from getting out, this timeline has already been decided. But another timeline, where he succeeds, would be created. The road splits in two. One freeway continues off northwest, and the other stretches out to the northeast. So why do we need the Nonary game? To give Sigma the chance to actually create the new timeline. Yeah, this version of Earth is always going to be screwed. However, there is a chance that Sigma could create a new timeline where Earth is not screwed. That's why. So one guy, we'll call him S, pipes up. Let's go northwest, he says. So they take the northwestern road. But about a mile past the intersection, something horrible happens. A semi driving the other way veers into their lane and plows through the bikers. Ninety of them die. The surviving ten are wounded, but survive. They don't stop, though. They keep riding down that highway, and eventually, they've gone ten thousand miles. Then suddenly, something happens that they couldn't have predicted. Yeah, he's got a reason for going with his speech. S, who had survived, suddenly has his consciousness thrown back in time. He ends up back in his own body just before they reach the junction. He remembers everything. So what does S do? What anybody would do? Let's go northeast. That means all 100 of the bikers survive to reach their destination happy and healthy. And they all live happily ever after. That's what you're thinking, right? It's a great outcome for the 100 bikers that went northeast, but what about the 10 that went northwest and survived the accident? Huh? Wouldn't it be nine people? I mean, S's mind went back in time, right? Uh, right. Okay, nine people then. What happens to the reality they were living? Does it just disappear when S changes the past? It's not as if it was only bad things that happened during that 10,000 mile trip. Maybe one of them fell in love with a woman working at a gas station they stopped at and had a child. Maybe one of them picked up a homeless kid who joined them on their adventure. That 10,000 mile journey would be full of stories. Friendships, farewells, romances. The loss of those 90 lives is horrible and unfortunate. But what would rewriting their history mean? The nine who survived lived full lives. How can it be right to just erase all that? The survivors overcame their own misery and loss and made the best they could of the hand they'd been dealt. Isn't that worth something? Isn't that the best thing that humans can aspire to? Is there really any point to a world where everything is happy? Are people who struggle for a better life just idiots? Being human is about fighting even when it seems hopeless and finding happiness even in a world that hates it. Are you saying that's worthless? If you're saying rewriting the past will erase all these other timelines, then whatever God wrote those rules can f <sighs> Look, I'm just not going to accept that, all right? You get it? If Sigma changes the past, then you and Quark will never meet. 
I is he right? No. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. We're here, right now. This is reality. Even if Sigma does change the past, we're not just gonna disappear or something. Yeah, it's still even kind of questionable if Ace was actually a member of Free the Soul. Or if they were just, they had infiltrated the uh, pharmaceutical company well enough to influence Ace to do what he did. That question is still kind of up in the air. The game never really clarifies it. Oh, then that means we get to stay together? <sighs> Good. Thanks, Kit. I understand how you feel. Why you want to return to Earth is clear. You have lives there, I imagine. There are likely people waiting for you. Right. Uh-huh. Have you already said goodbye to the others? Phi, Luna, Alice, and Clover all saw us off. We told them we'd see them again someday, and then came here. They were the only people you want to say goodbye to? No, no point saying anything to Dio. Besides, he's asleep. You were asleep too. Sorry, but we didn't really know much about you. You have a point. Akane was in the armor in this timeline, after all. What about Sigma? Well, he's not really Mr. Sigma anymore. Of course. He is Dr. Klein now that his consciousness has returned. Yeah, but more importantly, he's the guy who brought us all here. Not a lot of warm feelings there, you know? And Akane? Never mind her. She's just like him. Not the Akane I knew. She must have seen some pretty awful things over the years. Boy, this statement is going to become very, very funny to throw back in your face for the next game. Hell, she might not even be human anymore. But the Akane Kurashiki I know isn't here. She's not anywhere. In the end, Clover and I were just pawns. Pawns to be used and then gotten rid of. Still, it's not like we're completely resentful. We had to be here to help change the past. That part's easy to understand. Yep! That's Tin Miyoji for you. But... Kinda sucks, though. I mean, Sigma and Phi have it easy. They get to go back to December 25th in 2028. They'll stop the Radical Six, and save the world, and then they'll have a nice, normal future to look forward to. In other words, they get to go back to point E and just enjoy history like it was supposed to happen. But we don't. We're stuck with point C as our starting point. You told us about Ten Miyoji's story, right? The one with the motorcycles? It would be like if Alice and I were kidnapped right before the intersection. Then whoever grabbed us takes us to wherever the bikers are going, 10,000 miles to the northwest. Don't get us wrong. We know why we had to be here. Without us, S's consciousness wouldn't have been able to go back to right before the intersection. If that couldn't happen, then the fate of those 90 dead bikers would be sealed. But... It's still not the best situation for those of us left in the northwest. We're stuck in the reality where the 90 bikers died. Are we just supposed to go live on Earth? It's a wasteland now. And what about our friends and families? We left a whole world behind 45 years ago. Even if it is for the greater good? It just doesn't seem fair, does it? Yeah, it's a little bit much. So we went and talked to the old lady. She told us that there is one way. One way we could get back to the past. Let's say you do go back to the past. Wouldn't that cause your minds to get thrown back here? That seemed to be how Sigma and Phi's jumps worked, at least. Yeah, Junpei was never that smart. Yes, you're right. But this is different. Different? How so? From what she said, it sounds like there's a way we can send our bodies back in time, too. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It would create a paradox. How could you have two Clovers and two Alices at the same time? But that wouldn't happen. Akane says there's a way around that. 
How on earth does she plan to do that? Schrodinger's cat. Oh, hey, Kyle. Figured you'd come here eventually. Where's Dr. Klein? Luna said you were with him. He said he was tired, so he's off resting right now. There's a bedroom at the end of the hallway. He's in there if you're curious. Oh, right. He told me to turn on this hologram projector thing when you showed up. Want me to start it? Sh sure. Glad to see you. There isn't anything in particular that I have to tell you. However, I imagine there are a great number of things weighing on your mind. I'd love to answer all your questions, but unfortunately, my circumstances make that an impossibility. I hope you can forgive me. Everything I know, Phi should also know. I have instructed her to answer any questions anyone might have. Anyone other than Kyle, that is. What does he mean, other than Kyle? Who knows? Is there anything you want to ask? Oh, right, well, I guess I may as well cut to the chase. Just who are you, Fi? I'm not Superman, that's for sure. And I'm not Batman, or Spider-Man, or Aquaman, or a Merman, or a Wolfman. I'm not a Brahmin, or Common, or Raman. I'm not a Cayman either, so you really don't need to worry about anything. Please don't dodge the question. About five hours ago, Akane attacked you with a knife. That triggered something which sent your mind back to the past, correct? Specifically, you were sent to point D, April 13th, 2029. On that date, your body was already in Akane's custody. I mean, she did, it the, she did that whole spiel the first time to be able to say she was no man, so, you know. Although by then you were in cold sleep. You wouldn't have regained consciousness, but your mind was now inhabiting that body. That pod was your home for 45 years. You slept there, frozen, until the time was right. Then on January 25th, 2074, you were finally thawed out, even though you didn't wake up. Still unconscious, you were carried to the AB room. That was when your consciousness changed bodies again. A version of you from December 25th, 2028 arrived, pushing you out and sending you back to December 25th, 2028. This is when you finally woke up. In 2028, you found and joined forces with Sigma, whose older mind was inhabiting his younger body. Together, you attempted to infiltrate the Mars Mission Test Facility. Fortunately, your plan failed. The Radical Six did escape on New Year's Eve. That failure determined the path you followed. Instead of going along the line that branches out to the right from point E, you headed straight to point D. Point D being April 13th of the following year. That was the day that you made your way to Akane's hideout and asked to be put into one of the treatment pods. Another consciousness enters your body around that time from the future. It is, of course, the version of you that left your body when Akane attacked you in the garden. This caused the two versions of you to swap places, and you moved 45 years into the future where you woke up on the garden floor. That put you on the line that comes here. So if we discount the time you spent in cold sleep, for you only three and a half months have passed since that happened. That being when you were sent back into the past from the garden. Have I missed anything? No, everything you talked about you got right. Well, what do you mean by that? I'm kind of an unknown variable in this equation. You could think of me as a kind of... X factor. It's taken me the last three and a half months to understand it. And I haven't understood anything in the last three and a half seconds. Could you please explain? It's kind of like the relationship between classical mechanics and modern physics. Strictly speaking, you can't combine velocities with V1 plus V2. V1 plus V2 divided by 1 plus V1 times V2 over C squared is the actual equation. Of course, the sort of velocities we encounter in day-to-day -day life don't come close to being C squared, 
which is the speed of light squared. That means that 1 plus V1 times V2 divided by C squared is usually going to evaluate to something pretty close to 1. Since that would mean dividing by 1, it's usually okay to just skip that step and use V1 plus V2. You see what I'm saying? In most situations, it works, even if it isn't technically correct. Yeah, math is like that. So you knew enough to get the stuff you were talking about, right? As long as you stick to that, you won't run into any problems. I don't quite understand. In fact, I feel like you're dodging my questions. So was that what you wanted to ask about? No. What I really want to know is what happened between Christmas and New Year's Eve in 2028. You and Sigma infiltrated the Mars mission test site, didn't you? Yes. What happened there? How did Sigma lose his eye and both his arms? And why was Radical Six in there in the first place? What could a deadly virus have to do with the simulated mission to space? Sorry, but I can't tell you that. Why? Because... It would change history. There is a history where the virus didn't escape. That's the line that goes to the right of point E. In that timeline, humanity isn't heading for annihilation, and Earth isn't red. The future is much brighter. Actually, I can say that he did not lose his arms saving five. I can say that. But if I tell you what you're asking me right now, then that reality will disappear. You understand? I don't. Why would all of that disappear if you told me what I want to know? You're about to go back to the past, right? The past? Don't be silly. I can't do that. Then where the hell did you learn all this stuff? I just listened to you tell me a bunch of things you shouldn't have known about. You were sleeping in the pod in the garden. You just woke up. So how can you know all this? You know my past. Sigma's past. I shall give you your answer. You are not Kyle Klein. Your body is Kyle's, but your consciousness is not. Yeah, zero time dilemma. Time to hit some snags in production. I don't know the full extent of them. Maybe I'll read up on them and we can talk about it for next week's stream. But yeah, there were issues. Think about it. Do you really believe you are Kyle? Or could you be someone else entirely? Then where is the real Kyle's consciousness? He was thrown out when you entered. Right now, in a manner of speaking, he has arrived at December 25th, 2028. His consciousness has gone into a body from that time. I doubt you know how much the doctor loves Kyle. He raised him on his own. Kyle is irreplaceable. Do you really think he would go back to the past and leave Kyle behind here? I know what I told the others. That Kyle was Dr. Klein's spare. He, from what I understand, he had the plot. He had the plot. He had all the little things that would connect all three games together down. But yeah, he didn't have the details hammered out. He had to work the details out later. But he, but you can see the seeds. Once we play it, you will see what he obviously already had planned and what was written into this story to match up with it. But that was not his only purpose. Kyle's consciousness is integral to what we are trying to accomplish. This new mission begins on Christmas 
and ends on New Year's Eve 2028. Its purpose will be to infiltrate the test facility and prevent the spread of the virus. For this to happen, Kyle 